In PowerPoint, headers and footers for slides, handouts, and notes are added as text boxes to the top, end, or bottom of the related item. Unlike regular text boxes, though, we don't type information directly into them. Instead, PowerPoint provides a fill-in-the-blank style window into which we can designate which elements we want to include. We can display this window while working in our masters, or if we're working in the regular view, we can go to the Insert tab, over to the Text group, and click or tap the Header and Footer option. The window actually provides two different tabs, one for slides and one for notes and handouts. Since we were looking at a slide from the slide view, the slide tab was selected. If we would have been in notes and handouts when we did this, the other tab would have been selected. We wanna make sure that we're adding a header or footer on a slide. Now, I have to admit, I am not a big fan of using headers and footers on typical slides. To me, and it is just my opinion, the usual date and time and subject information just isn't relevant to show during most presentations. People know what they're looking at and why they're looking at it. The option to show slide numbers could be useful, I suppose, during discussions or Q&A sessions, but they're generally not important to show on screen during the presentation itself. Now, there certainly are exceptions, and some presentations lend themselves more readily to these pieces of information being more important than others. So we'll go ahead and use them when they're appropriate, but probably not for every presentation. Including this information on your slides simply adds clutter, so unless they're necessary, leave them off. In this presentation, though, we have an opportunity to do something that can be useful, not only for students, but for any professional who needs to credit or annotate their sources. In this case, this particular slide is talking about the Gettysburg Address. Let's go ahead and add a credit for that at the bottom of our slide. Instead of creating a completely separate text box that we then have to move and align and all of that good stuff, we can use the footer to do that instead. Now, because we're also trying to get an idea of what these things do, we're also going to go ahead and include a couple other pieces so we can see how they look. First, we can add the date and time by using the checkbox. Then we have two options. We can either say, update it automatically, in other words, so it always matches the system or the computer date and time, or we can put in a fixed date. That would be important if we were showing dates on, say, statistics, where they were captured at a specific date and time, and we needed to make sure that that date and time was noted. We'll go ahead and say, update automatically, and then we'll choose the format that we want. We also can choose to show the slide numbers on the slide. What we want to do specifically is type in some footer information. So we'll check the box for footer, and we'll type what we want to show. We'll go ahead and type in Gettysburg, PA, November 19th, 1863. One option that I really do appreciate is the option to say, don't show any of this on title slides. Like a Word document, title slides usually provide this type of information as part of the content of the slide. Making them available as part of a header or footer is really not necessary and it's repetitive and it makes our title slides look a little more cluttered. So once we get all of this information selected in whatever configuration we want, we have the option to apply it to every slide or to just this slide. Obviously, this is only appropriate for this slide, so we'll click or tap Apply. Now, we still need to do a little bit of work to get all of this to fit nicely on the slide, which we talk about in a different video, but we can see that at the bottom of our slide, we now have the date on the left, the slide number on the right, and Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, 1119-1863 in the center. Now our Gettysburg address is properly annotated, and we can also have people refer to when the slide was created and what slide number it is throughout the presentation. So the information is designated in the headers and footers window, but it can all be formatted on the slide like any other text box. We can select the text, we can apply italics, we can change the font, we can add colors. Usually, the formatting of headers and footers is done on the master, but it can be done on an individual slide as well. In order to see how that's gonna work, our last act will be to go ahead and move this other text box up a little bit to get it out of the way. And that allows us to come back down and to actually select and work with the footer formatting itself. It's important to remember that the purpose of headers and footers is to provide identifying information, generally across multiple pages, without having to recreate them each time. In PowerPoint, they can be applied to slides, notes, and handouts. Handouts should always clearly identify the source of the information and sometimes the date it was presented. Slides don't always require this information, but on occasion, they do as well. 
Sometimes they need annotations, for which footers provide an easy-to-use and already formatted location. When you're creating your presentation, consider the use of headers and footers to provide this identifying information to your audience. Using a single window and maybe a little bit of formatting, we can easily designate which information we want to appear and apply it to a single slide or all of the slides in our presentation.